So today we're going to be chatting with Pekan Gupta. He is a solution architect with Smart Modular Technologies, and we're going to be asking Pekan some questions. So welcome, Pekan. Thank you so much. Hi, Rachel. This is all good. And hi, everyone. So first and foremost, I think what we want to know is what prompted Smart and you to get engaged with Gen Z? Sure. So uh, Smart Modular Technologies, as you know, is more of a hardware manufacturer. And uh, our primary focus is in memory and storage technologies. So for us, uh, being ahead in the game, especially in all the new technologies, whether it's Gen Z, uh, OpenCAPI, C6, and now the CXL, uh, it's very important to be ahead than our competitors, to know the technology upfront much before uh, uh, it's the, there at the market, right? And start early at the incubation phase so that we learn the technology and we are ready by the time it matures and gets productized. And that's how uh, Smart Modeler get, uh, was introduced into the Gen Z world. They started, uh, we started, I think, in 2017, we joined the consortium. We had our first product as well, which was uh, PCI add-in card and it was uh, developed in collaboration with Intelliprop, who is a partner in this technology. And we even demoed it as at FMS and uh, supercomputing in 2017. So that was the start. And since then, it has been a long journey, uh, quite uh, learning and uh, I would say an entertaining one because there were a few ups and downs. And we, re we learned a lot, both in terms of ha hardware development as well as the software ecosystem development. So it was quite interesting. On the personal note, I joined Smart a little late uh, back in uh, 2019. Till then, Smart already had few products uh, in this space. And one of my primary charters was to mature these products so that they can be productized and be ready for uh, volume production. And that's how I got engaged into the Gen Z side of things. That's interesting. And I remember those demos from Flash Memory, so um, very, very cool. Uh, so how would you say that Gen Z technology has impacted SMART's developments? Uh, in a number of ways. So earlier, if you see the SMART was predominantly a, only a hardware manufacturer. We, stu we uh, still do a lot of hardware manufacturing, but the challenge with all the new, uh, new technologies is it's not just the hardware, you need the software piece, you need a complete ecosystem of different uh, vendors, suppliers, and everyone to come together and stitch that technology and make it useful for some early adopters. So Smart start, started with, uh, as a hardware manufacturer, we had some modules or what you will say as a memory hardware uh, in the market. But then it was incomplete for anyone to use because there was no software around it. So we partnered with Intelliprop and Intelliprop uh, developed the IP over it. They took it to a next level where uh, you can actually run some kind of test scripts on it and see the real performance uh, and benefit out of these kind of hardwares. But again, this was still incomplete because where will you connect these hardwares and how will you connect these hardwares? That's where other uh, players came into the picture, like uh, Amphenol came in with the cables, HP and Dell came with the backplate, the host, the server and everything. And together now we have a complete ecosystem that you can actually deploy a Gen Z fabric in a real uh, world data center and run some real workload and see what the benefit you are getting out of this particular technology. So our learning phase was from hardware, software, ecosystem, partnership, and developing a complete uh, business use case out of it. So it was good. Yeah, so you mentioned, um, you know, right off the bat, you were talking about um, being a leader and getting ahead of what's coming up next in the technology. And then now you've mentioned, you know, working with other organizations and um, working with other companies, right, to develop these solutions that you guys are, are putting into play. Um, so how do you feel just standards bodies in general, open standards bodies affect the industry? Uh, it, it's very, very important, especially in today's world, because 
one of the biggest advantage you get from a stand standardization of a protocol or a technology is that uh, it enables end customer uh, who is the adopter of the technology and gives them a variety of vendors and suppliers to choose from which is very important no one wants to stick with one particular source or get stuck with a proprietary hardware who has no support after five years down the line so end customer wants multiple uh, vendors suppliers to to provide them with a solution so uh, uh, standardized protocol helps that because everyone will develop same hardware which is interoperable and you can plug and play each other's uh, hardware and software on your system that's the one uh, biggest benefit. The second big uh, benefit is you do not have to do everything yourself. For example, uh, because it was a standardized hardware, we could depend on our partners like IntelliProp to develop the software and the uh, IP for Gen Z uh, without being in constantly being in mon uh, monitoring us or we uh, trying to help them and educate them likewise. So they were on their own independent uh, they developed their IP, which was interoperable on our hardware, and likewise. Uh, similarly, there are a lot of software companies which started their software work independent of the hardware uh, which they uh, use, because it's all standardized. Everything is written in a protocol spec, which is publicly available on the Gen Z Consortium website. So you can download that, read it through, you know everything about the protocol, and then you just start uh, at least preparing the base uh, code for it. So these are the advantages which you get from an uh, standardized and especially an open source kind of a, or an open uh, protocol that uh, you can together communicate with each other freely. You can uh, come together with open ideas, collaborate without having any uh, problems with the legal or IP licensing issues, which is, to be honest, which is a big challenge. If you if you uh, look from a business point of view and other challenges, it's, it's, it's a, uh, a problem which has been solved by standardizing, open sourcing some of the uh, property things. So it's good that uh, Gen Z is in the right segment, in the right direction, and uh, that has and it's taking advantage of all the good things which uh, standardization open source is bringing to the market. Yeah, we think so too. So that's great. I'm glad you glad you feel the same way. Um, so last question: um, What's up next for you and for Smart with with regards to Gen Z technology or showcasing um, that type of thing? Any anything you can share with us? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as you know, Smart already has two products in line, I would say rather three, because the first one was add-in card, which was a prototype concept. But then we developed a ZMM, which is a, a Gen Z memory module, uh, which was widely adopted. And then we came up with a UDK, which is a micro development kit to help early adopters. So we have uh, now these multiple products with the Gen Z fabric or the Gen Z protocol running on them. And we are partnering with uh, some of the research institutes, I would say, uh, educational institutes who see a value in Gen Z and taking it forward for their research work. Specifically, uh, Gen Z is very important or gives you a large pool of memory disaggregation, which is very useful for uh, high performance compute applications like for space ex exploration, for genomic research, for uh, research for COVID tracing now. Like all these are, uh, are applications where you require large pool of memory and multiple hundreds and thousands of cores simultaneously accessing that memory or data. And Gen Z is the right fit there because right now no other technology allows you to have such petabytes of uh memory and even allowing multiple uh cores to access it at a current uh in a current way so gen z is the right technology at the right time which is being used and uh, explored by these research institutes educational institutes and smart is obviously trying to help them uh, by collaborating with them providing them hardware anything we can help them with, with to develop the ecosystem around it and then we can productize it. 
It's awesome, exciting stuff. So Absolutely. great, thank you so much for taking the time today, Pecan. This was a wonderful chat and we look yeah. forward to seeing what comes next and hopefully seeing you at Supercompute in the Gen Z. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and see you there. Have a nice see day, you. take care, bye. Bye-bye.